yourselves ladies first hey it's Bernadette Mr. Gosling hey 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 it's Rob Gosling this is and we are and Bernie and I are the co-hosts of shoot from the hip coming in to you live tonight to help with the show and Mr. Kelly hey everyone I'm Ben Kelly a local uh wrestler here in Oklahoma, here to test out this uh, conference call and see what we can do and talk up some wrestling knowledge. All right. So I'm going to need some help on the raw because it's not in my brain. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the, the guru take over because she's really good at this stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean... Raw started off with a bang. I mean, when you see Vince McMahon come out, he's not coming out to say hi. He is coming out to do some serious business. And on Monday, boy, did he. (laughs) He dropped the bombshell that, well, they kind of upped the stakes of the Team Authority versus Team Cena match at Survivor Series that if the authority loses, they will lose their power, too. So it's now this little dynamic that uh, is making it a must-watch match. So that's how Raw started. I mean, it couldn't get better than that. And then, of course, it ended with a new U.S. champ in Rusev. And no matter and no matter where you look at it, a foreigner won. Now, really ironic. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be, that's right. That'd be like, that'd be like Rob wrestling for the Canadian title and Benny. <laughs> <Canadian. laughs> right. <laughs> so, what are you, what are your guys' thoughts on that opening? I mean, do you, do you uh, think what do you all think the authority is going to win, lose? Well, I think the pressure is going to be on them a, a little more. Um, I, I mean, when you, you I, I think it's all really going to depend on who the teams exactly are. So, I mean, right now, if we look at it, we've got um, Seth and Kane on one side, and we have what seems to be Cena and Ziggler so far on the other. And, and possibly it, Orton? Uh, and possibly Orton. Um, not sure about that yet. Well, we haven't talked about SmackDown yet. But yes. <laughs> um, with or- and possibly Orton on that side. Um, we've got the... I mean, people are looking at different... I, I'm looking at the teams a little, a little more t- as well. Um, I'm thinking if they put Bray Wyatt on Team Authority and Dean Ambrose on Team Cena, and then you have Cesaro and, and um, oh, can't think of his name now. Oh, come on. Oh, Cesaro just had a match with the guy tonight. Ryback. 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 Thank you. You know, if they're going to set that feud up, but, I mean, I don't know if I would put them on – Onto that type of a uh, matchup, um, 
I mean, you've got the Usos and, and uh, Stardust, Goldust, Miz, and Sandow. I mean, I don't know. I, there's so many different possibilities. Well, I really think it's going to depend on who the final teams are to determine who we think is going to win. And right now, also, it's more speculation as to who's going to be on which team. I think it also has to do with um, what they're planning on building up for WrestleMania. Because if they're planning to build, like, the Triple H, uh, what was it, Triple H versus, who the hell were they trying to, I think it was Sting or something, they're going to need the authority to win, right? Because Triple H is still going to have to be in power to sort of cause that power struggle. So it, it's it. <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on their long-term plans as well. Not just the team makeup, but it's going to depend on where they're going with, like, the Royal Rumble um, and going into to Mania, uh, what the long-range plans are. I, I really, I mean, I personally would like to see Roman come back and be a surprise, but, I mean, maybe they're going to save him for the Royal Rumble. That's that's what I'd do because, you know, he's freshly injured, so I'd either, A, put him on some dark matches, or, B, have him go against jobbers, um, maybe like Zack Ryder or Tyson Kidd, just to um, kind of, um, you know, get him ready back to where he was. Right. Right. Well, I think I, 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 at the same time, I don't even think he needs to do that. Think about it. They, what, they have something down in Florida now that they never had before. They want a guy to come back, and they want him ring ready. There's no better place than the performance center. He takes one week at that performance center, and I will guarantee you he will come back bigger and better than ever. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that's well, true. Before that, all they had was, like, FCW. And, <laughs> that's and right. The performance, uh, now that with the performance center, you know, they can do all they can, you know, need to do for the wrestlers. That's yeah. right. They have doctors there. They have, like, fully staffed, like, chefs and that, like, cooking and showing them nutrition and... They have everything there, and anything they have like coaches to help you uh, with your promo wise. They have for, everything there. They have four or five different rings for different styles, and each <laughs> ring is de- is designed for that specific style. So, I mean, if they wanted someone ring ready, don't think. I mean, the second he comes out of rehab, he get, he takes one week in that in that performance center just to get ring ready, and he's back on Raw. It's not like it, they're not going to take the time they used to to get guys ring ready again. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know all this because I unfortunately don't have the network and I don't get to watch NXT, so I'm not it, really up on the stuff. Yeah, but it's not even just NXT. It's the Performance Center itself down in Florida. Yeah, that it, it's, 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 it's the facility that it, that's holding everything. I mean, they have the, the most up-to-date gym. They have the most up-to-date... Uh, training equipment, and then, like I said, four or five different rings all set to different styles. And, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff down there. Bernie, As Bernie said, they've got catering and, they, and doctors and medical staff and promo areas, and like, they just it's insane. And what's good about that is that you have veteran wrestlers who train, like um, Bernie and I have talked about a lot, and I know you don't know her a lot, Rob, because – you're not as keen as ROH, but her name was Sarah Del Rey, and she right. used to, you know, wrestle with ROH, and she's, I think, particularly down there just for training right now. Yeah, but I'm hoping, yeah she's training the girls down there, I'm which is why the is. NXT the girls kick ass, because they are that's looking right. for one of the best. Yeah, they really are. I mean, and I that's see. why I, when when Cameron on on. Um, uh, oh, Total Divas. Divas went back, I was like, please, fucking be a sponge and learn from Sarah. Like, don't be a fucking, fucking bobblehead, airhead. Go down there and fucking learn. Like, that, yeah. yeah. But uh, let's, let's continue on with Raw. Um, <laughs> you wanna Raw was me? really solid this week, in my opinion. Like, I, I, liked, I, I liked everything about it. It was well-rounded. It worked. Um, and, like coming out of the pay per view, and like the the build up to Survivor Series, uh, it, it everything is working right now. It's it's like a well oiled machine. Uh, yeah. 
like yeah. WWE um, is very good at that. I will say, <laughs> and there are some things that they do very well, and that it happens to be one of them. When they're, you know, when they're um, building up to one of the big four pay per views, whether it be Survivor Series, SummerSlam, Mania, or Royal Rumble, their build up is usually really solid. Um, Cutting the other pay per views kind of feels a little rushed almost like microwave feuds, but um, that's what I call them. I call them microwave feuds when they're, like, trying to, like, force something down our throat really quickly and make us care when we actually don't. Um, you know, this this Bray and Dean Ambrose thing, I'm digging. You know, Rob and I were conversing last night, and him and I were talking about it, and if they do it right, Think about it. They're the two, like I said on earlier, I've been watching wrestling for 35 years. I have been waiting for a feud like this. You have ring technician. You have ring psychology. And see, people think when you take a look even at Bray, you may not know who his daddy is, and you may not know that Dean, you know, has, uh, but I think we mentioned it before in the show, how Dean has had ring. They're experienced. No, they're not veterans, but they know what they're doing. And the psychologist, Dean Ambrose, is the brainchild of Roddy Roddy Piper, Brian Pillman, and Chris Benoit. Bray Wyatt is the newer version of Waylon Mercy, if you all remember that gimmick. I didn't like Waylon Mercy. Um, very much, but I, 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 I dug the idea of it because it was totally Cape Fear at the time, which was, you know, a big movie at the time, so they totally stole that from, from uh, Robert De Niro's character. I totally got it. I just, I never connected with the Wheel and Mercy character like I connect with Bray Wyatt. And yes, right away when Bray came out, yes, my brain went right back to Wheel and Mercy, and I was like, damn, this is how it should have been done. <laughs> it's it's Whale and Mercy meets Skinner. Um, yeah. Is kind you of see. I, I I see. I always saw Dean. Or sorry, uh, Bray Wyatt. I guess I see. I I look at him differently. Like, um, plus it doesn't I, I hurt think, that he's got a famous daddy. No, 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 no. I understand that, but that's not what I'm talking about. I mean, I almost attribute the gimmick of Bray Wyatt to mankind. Yeah, I see that. Like, I could definitely see where he, where he, where Mick was definitely an influence on on Bray. Maybe maybe it's, maybe it's maybe it's a bit fifty fifty because it really it really does. Um, if you actually look up Whale and Mercy, it really does lean a lot to Whale and Mercy. It Fair really, enough. I just because I remember Whale and Mercy. Don't get me wrong. I just attributed well, I, the character, I guess, a little more to. <clears throat> yeah, because he, you know, like he's always in those really dark places doing his promos, the way um, mankind used to be in the boiler room. Yeah, like, but I mean, that's we, what it reminds me. Of. Maybe, maybe that'd be a good question uh, if somebody ever gets a chance to ask. You know, did you um, pick it from Ray? What I would love to know his influences. Oh, absolutely. That would be yeah, awesome. I was going to say, on Mick Foley's Facebook, he even said uh, about one of Bray's promos about how it was possibly more mankind than mankind. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I really think yeah. he took a lot of it. Like, you can definitely see Mick in, as an influence to Bray. That's, oh, absolutely. You know, hands down. <clears throat> absolutely. But definitely yeah. the look... Like when he like I, like when he first came out, I was like, oh wow, yeah. I was I was thinking earlier today, and I was thinking about like a you know perfect Survivor Series team. How we were talking about that. How how about how about this? You take Kevin Sullivan. Now uh, and, I, and I say that because it it you know if you do your dream team, you take Kevin Sullivan who played perfect mind games. You take. Dean Ambrose, you take Bray Wyatt, you take Mankind, you take Whale and Mercy, and put them all like on a team if that's possible. Also, can, can we can we switch Whale and Mercy for Undertaker? Yeah. Just saying. Here's the problem. Or Skinner. Hold on. Here's the problem with all of that. None of those guys played very well with others. 
Yeah, no kidding. So, sure, it would be a stacked team for about three minutes. Yeah. I didn't consider that what I was thinking. I was just like... the Right? No, no, it's, it's a totally stacked team. I'm not saying it's not. But then, for like three minutes, and then all of a sudden the first tag has to happen, and that's where the egos start. It's... Yeah, I mean, it, it would be a wicked team if they could keep it together. Oh, man, that would be like the worst probably team that I would be fearing going in there. I'd be, I'd be hmm. having, I'd be look, looking out like I've been wall, you know, going down there with the ruthless aggression, scared shitless inside going, oh, shit, it's ringmasters. <laughs> no, you know. <clears throat> now, who would you have them face? Yeah, that's the question. Mm. Because, like, you've now put them all on one team. That's all fine and dandy. Now, what who is, are they facing? Okay. Ah. Is uh, Ben I... still on the line? We haven't heard one one hair yeah. from him. Ben, yeah. throw your comments in, man. Don't don't be shy. Ben, you can talk too, dude. I have been here and there. <laughs> <laughs> I say most of the time I keep I get interrupted. So oh, <laughs> like well, we're so sorry. Go ahead. You know what? Oh, it's, it's, it's now yours. Hours. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was gonna. Uh, some of the stuff I've been trying to comment on is uh, first and foremost about what we were saying about all the uh, you know the build up and all this. Yeah, you, you gotta also realize that they're really trying to promote the network right now. So with right. Rusev winning the title on a network exclusive stuff. And you know them releasing all this stuff on that, and the build up to the special, you know, if Team Authority wins and all that good stuff. You, you need to realize that is all to make people want to buy the network after this free month is done. That's right. As far as the Roman, you know, someone I said, you know, Roman Reigns. We were talking about him. I wouldn't be honestly surprised at all if not only he was to come back and be a part of uh, Team Cena. But uh, and the reason I think they would do that is because, if you recall, before he got injured, he was in a feud with Seth, and they never really got to do anything with that because of his injury. So it right. would actually make a lot of sense for him to not, to not only be that surprise, but to continue where they left off. I agree with you full heartedly. Here's the thing. I don't know what his recovery is like right now. If he's yeah, not is. ready to come back yet, they may have to wait till another pay per view for him to be able to. That's the yeah, that only is. issue. It all depends on Roman's recovery. Yeah, yeah, that is very true. As far as this whole the fantasy match, I I couldn't even begin to tell you who this uh group that you guys have come up with fight. <laughs> I mean, that would be a one twisted group. And honestly, if they had the right manager, I could see if they had, you know, maybe even two managers, I could see them all getting along. But it would take that extra party to kind of control them. Well, I mean, if we're talking about managers, as far as that's concerned, I mean, I would definitely throw Paul Bearer into that because of Taker. And, and Mick Foley, um, to be honest. Um, and then you said Waylon Mercy, or no, you said who again? Who was the other three? Um, Kevin Sullivan. Right. Um, did I say Mankind? Yeah, Mankind I mentioned with Mick Foley. Yeah. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think who all this said. Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose. Those two, Okay. And Bray Wyatt, Dean Ambrose, and who was the third one? Uh, I'm trying to think. Taker, Mankind, Ambrose. Taker, Mankind, Ambrose. Sullivan, Kevin. Sullivan. Uh, And Bray. Okay. Yeah. Got it. What I was Ambrose, Sullivan, and Bray. Those are the three I have to think of here. Well, you're thinking of that. Well, I was thinking of their opponents. Now, how about this? Paul Heyman. There you go. And you go, yeah. you go 
I can see that. <laughs> you go crazy versus technical, okay? Like I said, this is fantasy because this can't happen simply for the fact I throw. Oh, in- I was going to suggest somebody on the other side. As soon as he mentioned everyone, it was someone that's got the ring psychology, and he'll probably fit in with your uh, technical people too. Because um, if we're talking fantasy, then we're going to talk about these people in their prime. And if we're going to talk about that, Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, I wasn't even thinking that because I was thinking more technical guys. Right, but Jake was technical. Don't think he couldn't wrestle. He was a great technical wrestler. But you want to get it. If you're going to go and face this kind of a crowd, you need someone that can get in their minds. There was no one better than Jake. And then I was thinking maybe Daniel Bryan, okay. Dean Malenko, Ooh. Chris Benoit, and Kurt uh-huh. Angle. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I like that. That'd be one we ought to throw at, uh, to Sean for uh, whatever you call it, face-off. Yeah, no kidding. Tell him, to, tell him to get one ready for Survivor Series. Here's a Survivor Series match for you. Um, the other way you can go, if you want to go, if it, the other way you can go instead of a full technical uh, roster is go is go like I want to say crazy roster. Now, what I mean by that is the guys that were really out there. Okay, I'll give you my. I'm, I'm talking Jeff Hardy, Sabu. Um. Sandman? Uh, Sandman. I I don't want to just throw all ECW guys. Um, No, like Jeff Hardy, Sabu, um, AJ Styles. um, Oh, come on, 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 come I'm going, like, really off the wall. Okay. Jeff Hardy. Sabu. Shane McMahon. Um, you know, uh, guys you just would never think of. Um, Bernie, help me out. I missed the question. Okay. I'm trying, you said who the opponent would be. Yes, the team. Jeff Hardy. I'm trying to think of like those off the wall guys. RVD. Jeff Hardy, Sabu, um, Shane McMahon. Okay, RVD. One more. Exactly. Like it's just. Um. Brian Pillman. Yes, that works. Yes. Oh my God. I would buy that pay per view. Now that. And then, or like you said, you can go the technical way, the way you were saying. So I was saying, guys, like, so I said Jake the Snake Roberts, because if you're going to go against these guys that you've just made into the craziest, darkest team there ever was, you need someone to go against them that can at least get into their minds. And if you want to go, and if you want a technical wrestler to boot, Jake Roberts. So Jake, Daniel Bryan, who did you say there? Benoit, Andrew. Benoit, Angle, Angle, and Malenko. Malenko. Yeah. Is who he said. I heard. I said yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you can go either side of it. Like you, you need people. Like if you're going to go against a team like that, you need the guys that are really out there in their own right to be able to pull it off. What do you think, man? Yeah, I, I have to agree. I mean, you got you got to have that equal team there. I mean, because you want the suspense, anyways, and that's the whole point of the Survivor Series match. That's and right. You don't want to, you know, a whole bunch of people that they could just, you know, outdo. You want that good team. So I, I gotta, I, I gotta agree. It, it, either the just all out there or the technicians that would. That would be one heck of a match. Oh, it would. 
I would definitely buy the pay per view. I wouldn't care if it cost me fifty bucks. That yeah. would be worth it. Well, I, 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 this, sorry, I was going to say this is a little off subject, but I heard a rumor, and I kind of want to get your guys' opinions on this since you're fellow wrestling enthusiasts. I heard a rumor they're going to steal the whole Lance Storm storyline of making the, uh, you know, when he got the WCW United States title and turned it into, like, the Canada title. I heard they're going to do that with Rusev. And do it as a Russian title. Yeah. Nah. Oh. Nah. I guess we'll have to see how it goes. Yeah, it depends on how they work it. Well, sure, they'll make it work. But, no, I mean, it's more... I, I guess he's just asking our opinion on how we feel if they, if they do that or do we think they're going to. If they do it right, I will totally buy. If they don't do it right, I'm not going to buy what they're selling. No. no this, I, I don't know if they're going to... I mean, this is just rumors for the same rumors that were saying that, you know, Kurt Engel was going to come and, you know, be the one that beats him, and then all of a sudden he's staying with TNA. So I don't believe these rumors for a minute. I just figured with fellow wrestling enthusiasts, this would be an interesting topic. <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting if they, like I said, if they do it right, I have no problems with it. Okay, guys, um, I think we all need to hang up and uh, call back for the after show and wrap this up because we've already exceeded our 30 minutes. Uh-oh. Or we're coming really close to it. Yeah, so, um, oh, he hasn't? Oh, never mind. I'm just going to keep going then. <coughs> Sorry. Never mind. I'll shut up. Ben, what we'll do is when the show ends is we you can call back. And the same number that I gave you, we'll all call back and just kind of just shoot the breeze with that being recorded. All right, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. because that's that's always fun. Especially Sorry for that in the middle of the show. Go on. Yeah, but uh, okay, where were we on Raw? Can I where were we on Raw? Christ, we haven't even got to SmackDown. Um, where were we on Raw? Well, I just mentioned the beginning of the ending. What what did you like that you're seeing? I didn't really see enough of it. I'm only about an hour in to a three-hour show. Oh, I watched SmackDown, if that counts. Yeah, okay, we can move on to SmackDown. We just watched SmackDown. We can go with SmackDown. Okay, you had the, you had the what I thought should have been, you know, one of the main events, but uh, it was... You had uh, the, as I called them, the Uh Oh Twins or the Uso Twins, versus the Cosmic Alliance versus Goldust and Stardust in a cage, no less. Yeah, for the tag team titles, and um, eventually Goldust and Stardust wound up winning it. Bragging rights to Stardust for using an Oklahoma roll. Yep. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah, there were only like three or four matches on SmackDown, but it was it was decent tonight. Dean's Dean and Braze was again off the hook. Was oh it's, my God! I died at that promo. I, I'm like, holy shit, is that awesome? Mm-hmm. Now, my deal, okay, my deal with Christian, is he coming back or what? No, I think they were just in an area where he happened to be, and they threw him on as a guest spot because he's still a name. So he's technically done, kind of like Edge. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know how true that is. I'm sure he could take on a couple of more matches before he's actually completely done done, but I don't think he's really part of main, main roster as much anymore. That kind of stinks. Cause he was... I, I honestly don't know. I would love to see him come back yes. and have a final run with a belt. Well, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, because he, he was really good, too. I mean... 
he was more the comic, and Edge had more the psycho- psychology to that one. No, no, no. Edge was the... Okay, every team that gets together, they're always going to be compared to the Rockers. Who's the Marty and who's the Sean? Edge was clearly the Shawn Michaels of the team. He was that breakout star between the two. And I, there was no denying it. You know what I mean? Um, that's, not to say, that's not to take anything away from Christian. Actually, one of, what C- Christian's smartest moves he ever made in his career was going over to TNA and getting the world title over there as Christian Cage and allowing the fans to see what he can do away from WWE and away from Edge and away from everything so he can show his own skills and then come back to WWE going, yeah, motherfuckers, now what? Yeah. I agree with That's that. That's the way I saw I've always seen it. I totally agree with you. That's exactly what happened. No, I agree with you. That's exactly what happened. He had to get away and basically prove to them, hey, you can give me the ball and I can go with it just fine. Yeah. Is Would it be almost kind of like, uh, again, I, I and I'm referring to tag team, the Hardy Boys, when they split up? that Jeff could go, because Matt's kind of, you know, even though Matt, I think, is the oldest, he's kind of been foreshadowed by Jeff a lot. Well, again, yeah, Jeff was the Shawn Michaels of the, of the team. Matt was put into the background because, no offense, Jeff had more charisma. Yeah. But, but again, not taking anything away from Matt. Matt had a great career. That's why I think it was a good move for Matt to go to Ring of Honor because that was his time to shine. Even though he was with the, as they want to call themselves now, the Kingdom, which is Michael Bennett, um, Adam Cole, and they threw in, oh God, who did they throw in? Maria? She's in there, but it's the guy that, Matt Taven. Matt Taven, I don't, and if I ruined that for you guys, I'm sorry about that. Um, but, you know, that's where he that's where he dominated because, you know, Jay Briscoe held championship belt. And Michael Bennett said, all right, here you go, Matt Hardy. And he named it, renamed it. You know, but that's where Matt Hardy, I think, really shone. And Matt did with TNA, too, when Jeff left. Matt did good with Fortune. Well, I mean, when when Jeff Hardy first left WWE, Matt was still doing well on his own with Shannon Moore as his little protege. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I mean, Matt Hardy version one, right? Like, I mean, and Shannon Moore was the MFer. Yeah, and Shannon Moore being the MFer. Yeah, what the Matt think? follower, like he. You know, they, they did their thing, and it was it was great. It, I was entertained by it. I had no problems with Matt. No. I but met Matt, think, actually. He's a really cool guy. But when you I think, think of the I Hardys, you know, you don't think of them as brothers. You think more yes, of, oh, Jeff Hardy, the guy who went toe-to-toe with, God forbid his name, CM Punk. Uh, the guy who went toe to toe with Undertaker in a ladder match. I yeah. just want to point out. Yeah, he did. That's right. And Undertaker goes, "I respect you." After that. What's the name of this painting? What do you think, Ben? I that was yeah. I I mean I agree pretty much with everything you guys are saying. I mean, Jeff was the uh, the shining star, and out the ladder match. Oh yeah, definitely. Although I mean. I really, I hate to say this because I am as big of a wrestling fan as anybody out there, but as one thing that a lot of people don't seem to realize, and this is not bashing on wrestling fans, it's an unfortunate fact I've had to learn being a wrestler. A lot of fans aren't too smart. And I'll tell you, a lot of them, they don't see Jeff, when they hear the Hardy Boys, uh, you're right, they think automatically Jeff, but they don't think, you know, the guy that went toe-to-toe with someone, they think, oh, yeah, that's that guy that jumps off ladders. 
Right, and that's the and that's the other problem. It's um, it, it is that that's how Jeff made his name. Unfortunately, is by jumping off these ladders and by doing these crazy ass stunts, like. You know, that that swanton off the jumbotron and shit. Like, who does that? Yeah. Now real real wrestling fans like us, like I like the like I was the uh, word I was using before, the enthusiasts. Now we we think, you know, yeah, the guy that went toe to toe was Undertaker, because we know we know those epic matches and those you know, the all uh, the awesomeness behind it. But yeah, I, I definitely, I have to agree. Jeff was definitely the brightest star. Matt was awesome in his own rights. And I, I also, I, I was a big fan of the whole version one, you know, Shannon you Moore being the MFer and Crash I mean, Holly being the moron. Go ahead. Go on. Do it, Bernie. Oh, no, she was just saying that she was a Matt Hardy fan and an MFer as well. Just to, she was just agreeing with you. Go on. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, and if you remember Crash Holly, you know, he he became Shannon Moore's apprentice and became the moron, and I just I thought that was awesome and just a funny little, yeah, cool thing. <laughs> I had forgot that till just now. Oh my God, the hardcore twenty four seven rule. <laughs> oh God, the hardcore title. <laughs> But yeah, I, I mean, Matt was just... called a moron, actually. What's that? Oh. Said I didn't mind being called a moron because I was a fan of Shannon's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shannon was awesome, and the fact that him and Matt were actually, you know, friends behind the scenes made it even a little, for those of us who knew that made it even better. Yeah. They were that. They were that way in TNA too, when. When Shannon well, I mean, again, they've been training together since they first started in Ome- when Matt was running Omega. I mean, Shannon Moore was one of the first people he went and got. Oh, okay. that's true. I'd forgotten that's true. about that. That's why they there? call me the Encyclopedia and Bernie the Guru. Well, Rob, I, 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 I have always thought in Oklahoma, and, and Ben and I, and my friend Chris, if we can ever get him to call in, but he's too shy. If we can ever get him to call in, him and I like know everything I thought. But Rob, you make me pick my brain. That's what I like about you. Never forget, first time I talked to you, two hours of nothing but wrestling. And that's why I call you my twin, because I am proud to know all three of you guys. Because you all are fans. We're not some <laughs> We're not some, and I'm not trying to offend any new fans, just people that come and think, oh, well, you know, this era didn't mean anything. Like you and I were talking about, Rob, last night, every generation is going to think different. To you and I, the 80s was the best. To these up-and-comers, it's going to be probably the Attitude Era. Well, no, no, no. I would say even a gen- uh, like I, okay. I would say I, I would put it this way because you're talking now in decades. So anyone who grew up as as a teen in the '90s who just was starting to get into wrestling, I mean, obviously they're automatically going to. So anyone who's like I don't know, 25 to 35, let's say 25 to 30. 20 to 30, in that, like in that era sort of thing, they're automatically going to say that it's going to be uh, the, the, the Attitude Era full hands down. For guys that have watched it since the 80s, like when Hulkamania broke out and rock and wrestling got together and the boom of wrestling during the 80s, during that time period, if you didn't live through it, you wouldn't understand what happened. And, I mean, to us, yeah, it's the greatest time period of ever. To guys who are older than us, the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, it's what they grew up on and attracted them to the, to the industry of wrestling, which obviously has evolved and changed over the years. Yeah. What do you think, Ben? What was your greatest era that you remember? Well, it, it was kind of, it's kind of weird for me because I didn't really, when I first got into wrestling, I didn't even know that WWE and WCW were separate things. I just had a couple of video games 
and I, I didn't in some action figures. And I didn't really get to know all the different decades and all that. I mean, heck, my first Raw I watched was the one where Eric Bischoff becomes general manager, if that tells you. Oh, wow. Okay. Fair enough. So, I, I, I mean, I love, uh, right now that I've gotten to do it, I can't pick a favorite era because I love, I love the 80s. I love the Attitude Era. I love, but I, I never really lived through any of those. I didn't get to see the invasion. I didn't get to really see WCW or WWF. I mean, like I said, when I started actually getting to watch, it was okay. WWE. Guys, I'm sorry to cut you off. I really have to do, but I but we have to wrap it up. Uh, we've gotten message from the producer that you know it is that our time is up. So, any final thoughts, real quick, um, and then we'll ra- and then we'll call up the show. We'll just hang up and then call back. Go ahead. Um, this has been final a great thoughts show. on this week of wrestling. Um, Go. It was ben. Re- oh, sorry. Hey, this week of wrestling, WWE, has been an epic week, in my opinion. I mean, really, they're really promoting their network, and they're doing it right. I've loved pretty much all the angles, and I can't wait to see the, where the Bray and Dean goes, and that's my thoughts. Cool. Andrew? Pretty, pretty much the same. I'm really happy with WWE's product this week. It, uh, I didn't fall asleep during any of the matches, so that's a plus. Bernie? You know what? WWE is making me really excited for Survivor Series. I, I like the build-up that they've done this week, and I just hope it continues. I concur with all of you. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be shaping up to be a really interesting Survivor Series, a really interesting uh, build-up between some characters, and, uh, yeah, looking very, very forward to uh, to the upcoming. So with that being said, please, everybody, follow us at RWF, on, on our page at RWF Media. You can follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash RWF Media. Follow us on Twitter at RWF Media. Remember, to the number to call in is one seven one five five nine seven two six thirteen hundred. passcode 742-021-POUND. That is our show for the week, folks. Thank you so much. Andrew, I'll let you cut it out. All right, guys. It's a wrap. And...